my car. 1989 was a good year for this YouTuber. It was the year the first serious Batman movie was released. It was the year of my very first Perfect 300 game. It was also the year that Final Fight was released. This game revolutionized the genre and changed the way the games are made. What's the connection between this game and Street Fighter? What was the controversy surrounding one of its antagonists? So crack those knuckles and get ready for battle. This is the history of Final Fight. In 1989, Japanese developer Akira Nishitani was taking notice of the successful beat-em-up genre. He wasn't a fan of standard scrolling fighting games, so when he first took an interest in developing a new game, the first thing he asked himself was how to make it more interesting. This is what started the game that revolutionized the beat-em-up genre. Final Fight is a two-player beat-em-up scrolling brawler that is set across six stages. The game sees you make your way through Metro City to rescue Jessica, who was kidnapped by the Mad Gear Gang. You have your choice of three different players, all with different attributes and movesets. The characters are Mike Hagar, the mayor of Metro City and also the father of Jessica, Cody, who is Jessica's boyfriend, and Guy, Cody's best friend. You have an attack button and a jump button. These can be used in various combinations to execute different maneuvers. The game has a lot of different attacks, much more than Double Dragon and some of the other early brawlers. For example, depending on who you are, you can grab an opponent and throw them. All fighters have what's called a death blow. If you press both buttons together, you will do a special move that knocks all the opponents down. However, this drains part of your health every time you use it. Mike Hagar has a pro wrestler's moveset including a German suplex that would put Brock Lesnar to shame. Cody and Guy rely more on the martial arts and are a bit faster than the more powerful Mike Hagar. Mr. Nishitani said that he wanted each character to have a different moveset and a different journey and that this feature took a long time to implement. He took inspiration from Double Dragon, but did not like that the characters of Billy and Jimmy Lee played identical. There are also various items to be picked up across the levels, including meat and alcohol for energy. Now I know when I get ready to have a street fight, it's always helpful to find a bottle of vodka lying on the ground to give me a quick boost of energy. The Mad Gear Gang is also a colorful cast of combatants. Among the members of the gang are Andore, Poison, Roxy, Elgato, Axel, Bread, and Bill Bull. The ringleaders are Damned, Sodom, EDE, Rolento, Abigail, and the final boss, the man who steals on wheels, Belger. Contrary to popular belief, Andore was not based on Andre the Giant. Mr. Nishitani had a friend nicknamed Andore and wanted to immortalize him in a game. Thanks to the Capcom Play System or CPS board, this game used extra large sprites and nice detailed backgrounds. The CPS board was host to such classics as Ghouls and Ghosts, Strider, and UN Squadron. This board would also go on to host a little known game called Street Fighter 2. Thanks to the extra power from the board, the screen fills up with enemies with no signs of slowdown. There are two bonus stages in the game. The first one sees you take your frustrations out on a helpless car. You have 30 seconds to completely destroy this vehicle. If you are successful, the owner comes out and says, Oh my god! On a side note, the Super Nintendo version changed the line to, Oh my car! Mr. Nishitani had toyed with the idea of destroying pianos and houses, but felt visually the car was the better choice. The second bonus stage sees you have to break multiple panes of glass in under 30 seconds. I felt like Daniel-san from Karate Kid 2. According to Mr. Nishitani, there was a female office worker at Capcom that was heavily into rock and roll music. He asked her to list as many names as she could, which they ended up using for the various bad guys. One of the most memorable antagonists has to be Roxy. It's not too often that you see a female, especially one as drop dead sexy as Roxy, getting into fisticuffs with men. Capcom USA thought it was a bit odd too and backpedaled on this they ended up calling her a new half, or a Japanese name for transgender. So I guess Capcom is saying it's okay to beat up on a person who is transgendered. Not very good Capcom, not very good. When Mr. Nichitani and his crew were designing the game, they set out to make a unique and original beat-em-up. After they were through developing it, they realized there was a Tokyo game show right around the corner. One of the higher-ups at Capcom suggested they change the name to Street Fighter 89 to cash in on the Street Fighter IP. At the event, with a newly rechristened Street Fighter 89 name in place, the game made its debut and was a huge hit among the attendees. One question that people kept asking about was the connection to Street Fighter. 
They felt they had a strong enough game on its own merits and did not need to cash in on another IP. They ended up reverting to its original name of Final Fight. Also, did you know Guy was gay? Let me explain. Very deep in the arcade game code is an unused graphic showing the original spelling for Guy's name. The original spelling was G-A-Y, which in Japan doesn't mean a thing, but in English means something entirely different. The higher-ups at Capcom made them change it almost immediately. Other name changes for the home releases including Damned becoming Thrasher and Sodom becoming Katana. The game was censored for the Western Home Council boards. On Stage 3, you are no longer entering a bar, but a club. Roxy and Poison are giving less revealing tops. Jessica was given a top to wear instead of just a bra. All alcohol references were removed. All blood was removed. And the statue on the last stage had her assets covered up. The game quickly rose to the top of the sales charts and became the number one arcade game of 1989. U.S. Gold was in charge of all home computer conversions with mixed results. Here in America, we were not lucky enough to have any commercials promoting Final Fight. The Japanese, though, got a really cool live-action reel. Final Fight. Final Fight. Capcom. The first one we're taking a look at is the Commodore 64 version. Now this one is just a mess. There is no way they could replicate the giant arcade sprites in a trusty but perhaps rusty Commodore 64. The characters are barely recognizable and the colors are dreary. You also only have one button as opposed to two, which really hinders the playability. Add in horrible sound effects and you get the perfect recipe for disaster. The Super Nintendo version is the one most fans will recognize. Looking extremely close to the arcade game except for one glaring omission. Where the heck is Guy? Shipping on an 8 megabit cartridge, there was no room for Guy or the coveted two-player mode. The game was also censored with the removal of Poison and Roxy, and in their place were Billy and Sid. The sound effects and music are top-notch. Game plays very well, even with these omissions. Speaking of Super Nintendo, in 1994, Guy finally got his time to shine in Final Fight Guy. Replacing Cody as a playable character, the game was otherwise virtually identical. This was a rental-only game available only at Blockbuster. Due to this, the game now commands big money. The Amstrad version is up next, and the first thing you notice are the giant sprites. Looking very close to the arcade game, what lets this down is the speed. If it was just a little bit faster, it would be a pretty good conversion. Minimal sound, but at least the colors are good. Graphically, the Atari ST version looks very close to the arcade game. The colors, though, are a bit dull. The game plays reasonably well with only one button. Pretty good speed and music while we play, but horrible sound effects. The Spectrum version is up next, and for an 8-bit black and white game, this looks really good. As a matter of fact, when this game came out, it received high marks across the board. If it were up to me though, I would take that board and smack them over the head. No sound, and the playability is terrible. What really brings us down is the speed. It's slower than a turtle fart. The Amiga version is really well done with the graphics ripped straight from the arcade board. No music while you play, but there is nice digitized sound effects. The game is fast, even faster than the Atari ST. It plays pretty good, even with only one button. The Sega CD is the cream of the crop when it comes to the Western releases. Not only do we have perfect CD quality audio, but the two-player mode was included as well as all three characters. The game is hurt a little by the loss of color, but everything else is arcade perfect. Final Fight was released in Japan for the Sharp X68000 machine. For those of you who don't know, the X68000 was a very expensive machine released only in Japan and sold for the equivalent of $6,000 in today's money. This machine was a development system for the CPS board, which is why most arcade conversions looked almost identical. Final Fight is an almost perfect clone of the arcade game. Perfect sound, excellent playability, and arcade graphics. In 1993, Capcom released Mighty Final Fight for the Nintendo Entertainment System. The giant sprites would not be possible in this machine, so they decided to make all the characters super deformed, but left the playability intact. The game included all three characters, but sadly was missing the two-player option. They even included a level-up option, which gave you more moves the further into the game you progressed. In 2001, Final Fight 1 was released for the Game Boy Advance. This is everything the Super Nintendo version should have been. 
All three characters are selectable, large detail sprites, and even the two-player option with the use of a link-up cable. An excellent conversion in every way. Final Fight 2 was a Super Nintendo exclusive title released in 1993 that finally includes the co-op two-player mode. Mike Hagar returns, but Cody and Guy do not. In their place are Carlos and Mackie. The two new characters play almost identical to Cody and Guy. The game did not get very good reviews when it was released, with a lot of the criticism being that it was too similar to the first game. Final Fight 3 was released in 1995 again for the Super Nintendo, featuring Mike Hagar and the triumphant return of Guy. It also includes brand new fighters Lucia and Dean. The game featured branching paths and all new moves which freshened everything up. In 1999, Final Fight Revenge was released in the arcades. This was the only arcade sequel released in the franchise. This ditches the beat-em-up brawler totally and is instead a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. You have 10 selectable characters with a character-specific ending for each one. All of the characters appeared in the original arcade game. Playability is a bit bland and uninspired, but the animation is nice and smooth. If you are a fan of Final Fight, check this one out. In 2005, Final Fight Streetwise was released for the PS2 and Xbox. This is a 3D beat-em-up and in my opinion, is just horrible. Dreary graphics and animation and a gloomy storyline about drug addiction makes this one to skip even if you are a fan of the franchise. It is so bad that Mr. Nishitani was not even aware it existed. He refused to comment on it when asked about his opinion of the game. There wasn't much in the way of merchandise for this game, but one cool little thing is in the Street Fighter animated series. There's an episode called Final Fight, which revolves around the mayor and his daughter Jessica being kidnapped. It's a cool little thing to see, especially if you're a big fan of the series. In 2010, Final Fight Double Impact was released for the Xbox Live and PlayStation Networks. This is a two-pack of both Final Fight and the arcade game Magic Sword. These are essentially arcade perfect games, but you are able to play multiplayer online. And that's it. It's been 13 years since we had an entry in the Final Fight franchise. It's too bad that Streetwise essentially killed it, but with retro gaming more popular than ever, perhaps the franchise can make a comeback. You can't beat a classic game, and this game is definitely a classic. It's the best when you're playing two-player cooperatively, so if you happen to see one, give it a shot. You'll be glad you did. Please consider supporting me on Patreon. Also, please like and subscribe to my channel. It's the only way my small channel can grow. Thank you for watching. Thank you.